in Osu and we're going to explore the art of salsa dancing. You're going to learn a lot today and definitely we're going to dance. My name is Melissa Awad, this is Arts and Soul, let's go. who is an instructor and the DJ for salsa in this city. So we're going to have a conversation with Ike and he's going to tell me everything I need to know about salsa dancing and salsa in the city. Ike, how are you doing? I'm good. How You're good? I'm oh, fine. And one of these, I want one of these jets. Don't worry. After this interview, No problem. Okay, Ike, so let's talk. So I'm here. We're here at Little Havana in Osu. Um, where on Friday nights, salsa in the city teach salsa dancing and you have other various dances but the core is salsa um, and then you have the so, uh, social dancing aspects where people can put their moves to good use and have fun so first of all I want to ask why why salsa why afro latin dances in the first place for you for me yeah okay so uh, let me start with how I started salsa yeah yes. okay so um, I had this friend Nephi, he's Nephi, and he invited two of us, a friend and I, to go dance and salsa. And I was thinking salsa, like, why would I do salsa? But I am one person who really loves music. Yes, the sounds of uh, the beats or whatever hits, even when you're clapping, I enjoy it. So, um, and I wasn't good with our dances like uh, Azonto, Al Qaeda, and all that. I wasn't that, that good with it. So when he invited me, I went over. And I really liked the ambience, the environment, and everything that was going on. So I started walking. And I mean, I fell in love with it. Yeah. And this is me now. So. And then you realized you were good at it. That you are good yes. at it. I I never thought I would be good at any kind of dance until I started salsa. Really? Yes. So it's like you just have to find that special thing. You know, sometimes you don't have to find it. It finds, it finds you. you. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very true. So I think this one found me. Yeah. yeah. And, and you've I'm never looked back. Yes, I've never looked back. I've never regretted it. And I'm enjoying it, actually. There is so much excitement in me when I'm on the salsa floor or when it's about salsa dancing. And if, if it has even exposed me to other dances, other Afro-Latin dances, like the merengue, bachata, yes, and thank you. So how many years now? Um, 10 years. What? I started October 2009. You're talking like you did this thing like two years ago, five uh, it years ago. It was just a few years ago. You are a professional, professional, <laughs> up and down professional. Thank you. Wow. Well, congratulations for your journey. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, then, so um, what about your patronage? Before we get into um, the other aspects of uh, dancing, what about the patronage? Who typically would come to a night like this on a Friday night? Um, is it local or international, or is it a good mix of both? It's always a mix of both. Okay. Yes. People come here for various reasons, and people 
patronize salsa dancing for various some they do it for pleasure some come to learn to be professionals others yes so some to just release stress mm -hmm. yes you know we come from different homes yeah. you don't know what someone oh is going through yeah. yeah so we come to salsa grounds and i mean for that few hours or minutes you feel there is no problem at all, nothing to worry about. Do, do you get feedback? Like, do people tell you how it's impacted their life? Yes. yes what are some of the things people say? Some, 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 some. Uh, one lady, she's from UK. She was here for about three months and she mentioned uh, she felt a bit lost. I mean, she, she had uh, some problems. She didn't discuss that with me. That is confidential. Too. But she came in, started dancing, and like I mean, she found herself back. That was what she told me. She told me she found herself back. I don't know how that helped her uh, uh, um, problems. She was have no problem. Yeah, but she told me she found herself back. And Maybe it built her confidence. Yes. Maybe. And we were talking about something off camera. That yeah. say you're a shy person. <laughs> you have a big smile, which I think is very, Thank you. very probably um, a bonus and a plus for people that are coming to take your classes. Because maybe it would even help them get over their fear of dancing for the first time. But you say you're shy, so did dancing help you overcome any type of shyness? Yes, it does. Yeah. It does. Because, like I was telling you, I was so much an introvert. There was no social life. No nice life or anything. Just you. Just indoors. me. I mean, even if we're having the conversation, I wouldn't say anything more than you ask. You ask, but now at least I'm able to open up and talk a bit. So it built up my confidence a lot. So how did your family receive you telling them that this is what I do as a profession? Because let's remember where we are. And typically, a lot of our parents would prefer the traditional way of maybe schooling or a trade which is nothing wrong with that but you're you're an artist you are an artist yeah. because you're in the arts um, so did you have any problems with your family members receive it do they know or is this the first time that they're <laughs> they know they know they know and okay for now they've accepted it but it wasn't that easy okay. especially for my dad my mom was okay so my dad will call me hey hi Someone told me you now dance salsa. What are you dancing salsa for? I sent you to school to learn and become a doctor and all those wow. stuff, and you are doing salsa. Yeah, so you know, I was able to convince him, tell him why I'm doing salsa and and, and, and how salsa makes meaning to my life. Yes, you know, profession is about sometimes about passion. Yes, yeah, you can follow money and. Um, do all you want to do, but sometimes uh, passion really counts. And I'm I'm doing this as a side actually. Yes. Do you want to tell us what the main? That main. Okay, so I work with a, a property consultant agency. Hey. Uh, as well, I'm a student. Wow. Yes. So salsa dancing is uh, a side like a, a touch. But it's your passion. Yes. Wow. Yes, I'll choose also dancing. So, is 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 your dad okay with the fact that you have something main happening and yes. the salsa is on yes. the side? Yes. That was the only thing Compromise. to convince him. Yes, you know. Wow. Well, has he seen you dance? Have your parents yes, seen you yes. dance? Oh, what was the feedback? They... <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'll, when my grandmother turned 80 years, they invited us to me to bring uh, my guys. So we go and perform. Wow. Yes, and they did. And they also, they were amazed. In some way, surprised. They didn't know I could. <laughs> yes. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure your dad is probably bragging about you privately. And my dad used to be a dancer, actually. You see? Yes, he used to do all those, you know, break dancing. Hey. <laughs> so that's where you got it from. But you didn't know, right? I didn't know. And my mom used to do cultural, traditional mm -hmm. dances. Yes. So it didn't come as a surprise to my aunties and all that, but yeah. uh, I mean. So we should thank your mom and your dad. 
Yes. Basically. Yes. And look at I that. I fuse their break dance and cultural dance That's and I'm doing salsa. <laughs> I don't even know that. <laughs> That's good. Okay, nice. Um, okay, then, so then briefly, salsa in the city though. Salsa in the city. Um, how do you think that it has enhanced our culture, um, especially our dance culture? Because we have our ethnic groups, we have our cultural dances, we have the street dances, we have everything. We've come up, we're coming up with so many things that are going global. You go on YouTube and you see some of our dances are Zanku and, well, from West Africa and, and everything. But as far as doing Afro-Latin Afro dances in Ghana, where it pretty much originated from, went outside, came back. Um, have you seen a shift in our culture? Are Ghanaians receptive? That's the question you want to ask. Are Ghanaians receptive to this style of dance? No. Yeah. Really? Yes. Okay, explain why. Ghanaians are receiving it in, like, you know, salsa dancing is uh, more, more, like, we need the percussion in order to do it from, like, our kunka, our cultural dances. So, it's kind of aligns. So, I mean, they are accepting it, and salsa and they still have... So, Ghanaians are accepting it? Yes, they are accepting it. Ghanaians are accepting it. They, they, they hear the salsa music and it feels like uh, our own. Mm -hmm. yes. Like they're hearing the drums the from drums. somewhere and... Okay. Yeah, so it feels like, well, this is our own, wow. even though it has a different feel, but yes. And about salsa and the city, how, is, uh, how, how it has impacted our, uh, our economy or Ghana, as I said, our traditional dances. Yes, we had this program not long ago, somewhere in August, yes. So we had this program where we invited cultural troops and other forms of dances. So how can people get involved? How do people get involved? Yeah, it's awesome. it's like never been before, how do I get involved with South in the city? Okay, so we're always, when you come, we have welcoming ambience actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, and instructors are always ready to uh, um, talk to anybody who comes in I mean, to make you feel at home and comfortable. Yes, and at every start of uh, every Friday session, we give free lessons. Yes, so that also makes you break the ice a bit before yep. you start the day in the night. Okay, nice. And I get to try, right? You guys are going to yes. teach me. You yes. and Anna are going, going to teach me. We are going to teach you. Hey. I got my shoes. <laughs> I yes, think for the ladies, is it's cool, nice. right? Yes. I'm not it's bad. Good. I think I'm ready. I have that, like the <laughs> Cuban we effect. Have professional shoes, but yeah. this is also fine. Professional shoes? Yes. Let's take we it have one step at a time. Professional shoes, but this is also um, very fine. All right, one step at a time. <laughs> Some of us, you've already yeah. had a few, a few dance lessons. Um, okay, so then very quickly, your social media handles for South in the City so people can contact you guys. On Facebook, Salsa in the City, GH. And same as Instagram. Salsa in the City GH. Are you yes. guys on Twitter? Not no, at the moment. Not at the moment. Yes. No problem. Um, and then is there a contact number? Yes. You can contact um, 0246 555 608. I'll take it again 0246 555 608 or 0248 041 092. 0248 041 You've been doing this a very long time. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I, I want to say a huge thank you to you. Um, thank you to you. Thank you. All the team at Salsu in the City, um, you guys are doing an amazing job. But I came dressed ready to dance. Yes. But I think I'm ready to dance for you. Yeah. <laughs> guys, so when we come back from the break, Ike and Anna are going to be taking me through some steps. I think I'm ready, going to be shimming or shaking the shoulders, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to have a good time. We'll be right back. So, I caught up with Anna, a salsa dance instructor at Salsa in the City, who gives us a glimpse into her salsa journey all the way from Brazil. So, Okay, so my name is Anna. Um, I'm from Latin America. I'm from Brazil. And I was born and raised in Brazil. 
until I moved to Ghana three years ago. I came here initially to be a project manager for a company and I was supposed to stay here for six months only. And when I came, I fell in love with the country, with the culture, and that's when I started connecting a lot more with my own culture, with my own Brazilian and Latin American culture. And I connected with salsa dancing in Ghana. I got to know the people who are not my colleagues. And then I decided to stay in Ghana and now I'm part of Salsa in the City. Yeah, I was leaving Ghana actually, that was last year. I left Ghana, I should say, I left Ghana and then I decided to travel in West Africa for a while. And by the time we launched Salsa in the City, I was around just visiting them. Um, but then I decided to stay and make it work with them. So it definitely de defined my path. So São Paulo is a huge town. I usually explain to people it's like our New York in Brazil. There are 24 million people living in, in Sao Paulo only, which is kind of like the whole of Ghana in one town. Um, so I think now that I've been here for three years, every time I go back to Brazil and I stay in Sao Paulo, I kind of miss um, the connection I have with people here. So Sao Paulo is, 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 is very dif different from here, I would say. Um, but also Sao Paulo is a mix of all cultures in Brazil and in the whole world. So that's how I connected to New York as well. Um, so when I go there and I see people who are actually from here and they're staying there, people from all around Brazil, people from all around the world. So that's how I was raised in this type of environment. Um, but that doesn't define my whole culture and my whole background as well. Um, so even before I came to Ghana, I stayed in Sao Paulo, but I was spending um, half of my time in a place called Bahia, which the capital of Bahia is Salvador. And Salvador is more or less um, our own version of West Africa and Ghana in Brazil, uh, because that was when back in time, centuries ago, most people who were forced to leave West Africa and they were taking doing slavery trade to Americas, uh, that was where most of them were taking to. So I know that for instance, 50% of everyone that was taking from Africa to Americas was actually taking to Brazil. So 5-0, 50%. And most of them were taking to this region in Brazil, which is Salvador and Bahia. Um, so there's a lot in common, our songs, our music, our dance, food. Um, we have Kose, Poto Poto, Wache, so all food from Ghana, you will find that in this place. Different names, but one, there is one which is, you know Kose, I heard that here some people call Kose Akara, and then when you put something inside they will call it Akara, we call it Akaraje, so it's almost the same thing, but there's some, some difference, but the, the taste is the same. So this place in Bahia is really, for me, it's like where my heart is, I feel connected to it. I've always felt connected to when I was in Brazil. And if I ever have to think about going back to Brazil, that's where I would like to go, I think. For me, growing up um, in Brazil, we do dance a lot of salsa and other Latin dances. We have our own versions of those dances as well. But growing up, we dance a lot and we used to call them Latin dances, right? Um, but when I came to Ghana and I started getting connected to salsa here and with the term Afro-Latin dances, that was when something inside of me um, made me very curious and then I started researching more about it, talking about it with, with some people um, from here and from Brazil as well. And then actually salsa and other Afro-Latin dances, they are what the name tells, they're Afro-Latin dances, which is basically a mix or a blend of African dances and Latin dances. And Latin, when I say Latin, I mean Spain and Portugal, right? Because most, I wouldn't say all, but most of the countries in Latin America were colonized by either Spain or Portugal. Um, but they did receive a lot of influence from West African countries when they weren't even countries by then. Um, but I would say West African cultures and ethnicities. Um, so of course when all those people were forced to live here and they were taken to um, Latin America so it can be either Cuba where salsa is from or from Brazil where there is samba, there is bachata as well, merengue, those are all Afro-Latin dances. Uh, they were coming from different places in West Africa. Uh, so when they were all dancing together there was a mix of dances. So let's say Yoruba dances with Ewe dances with um, um, Akka dances 
because they were all mixed in one environment. You do see um, similar dances. I wouldn't say the same dances because there was what I'm calling this mix or this blend of cultures, the fusion of cultures, right? So when, let's say, Hausa, um, some people who were Hausa, they were taken from here, they wouldn't stay only amongst Hausa in Brazil. They were mixed and some of them over centuries or over, uh, how do I call it, generations. Um, they weren't even sure where they came from, um, but there is a mix, so definitely. And that was when I grew up not knowing about it, but now that I'm here, I'm also studying some traditional dances from here, and it's funny because every time I, I get to learn a new dance from here, I can easily connect with so many dances we do in Brazil, with different names, but the, ty the same type of body movement, the same type of, of it's grounded, it's in circle, it's, it's, yeah, so there's a lot of similarities. So that is the part from West Africa. And if you take the drums, if you take the rhythm, rhythm if you take the way we move our bodies, those are um, how the people from here were dancing. But then we also have to remember that in the whole of Latin America, there was the influence of Spain and Portugal. And by then they were dancing the couples dancing, right? So they used to dance uh, waltz, for instance, or the dances that come from Spain, they were all uh, dances in couples. So for me, that was when I was, I was wow. <laughs> that was when I realized that, um, and I got to know more about it, that salsa and all the Afro-Latin dances, there were actually this marriage between the way of dancing from Spain and Portugal in couples with the body movements and the rhythm and drums from West Africa. So I've always dreamed about dancing, actually. Growing up, that was, that's always been my true passion. Um, but then I decided to go and study engineering instead of following my dream. And that was until I came to Ghana. And for me, Ghana breathes um, dances all around. Everywhere I go, I see people dancing. I see beats. I hear, I hear beats. I hear drums. I see people enjoying. Um, so for me, again, staying south in the city, I don't think, I usually tell people, I don't think I'll ever fully blend in. Um, for many reasons, but the first of them is that people would always look at me and they will say I'm not Ghanaian, right? And I come with a lot of background as well. I come with a lot of, um, part of my history is also from, from Europe, is from Brazil. Um, but I do have this sense of belonging here in Ghana that definitely comes with dancing. Um, it goes beyond dancing, it's related to getting to know more about my history, part of my history that we don't learn about in Brazil, to be very honest with you, that's what we were talking about. Our educational system in Brazil, unfortunately, is very Eurocentered. We don't get to learn about half of our culture, which is actually from here. So getting the chance to be in Ghana is also allowing me to get more connected with this part of my culture that I feel has been taken from us. Um, but dancing is definitely part of it and South Side the City is what is allowing me to do it through dancing, through music, through songs, through getting connected with um, Ghanaians, my friends and they are my current business partners as well. So we work very closely together and that is when I, I don't even know how to answer a question, how do I feel, what is it when we come here on Fridays and Sundays, um, but it gets me this sense of at the same time connecting more with my own roots, my own culture, but I'll, um, allowing Ghanaians to also get more connected to their roots. Right. And bringing back, or should I say bringing back salsa, uh, bringing back home um, Afro-Latin dances somehow. And in case anyone would also like to get involved with it, uh, we are here at Little Havana. Little Havana is our home, is the home of salsa for us. We are here every Friday from 7.30 um, p.m. We also teach here every Sundays. Uh, you can connect with us through our social media on Facebook or Instagram, Salsa in the City slash Ghana. And there you're gonna find all the details about this. We're also going to be launching very soon a membership. Um, so if you're interested in becoming a member of Salsa in the City in Ghana, please contact us and we'll um, give you a, more information about it. So, art and so
We have NJ, we have Desmond, we have Ibrahim, we have Lumba. Fantastic, guys. Oh, I'm having a fantastic time. So, Little Havana in Osu. Come hang out with Salsa in the City, social dancing, but you also get taught one on one instructions. And the time is 8 p.m., right? Yes. 8 p.m., guys. And also on Sunday, what time? 5 Sunday, 5 30 to 6. And that's one on one teaching? Yes. Fantastic, guys. I've had such a good time. <laughs> <laughs> guys, <laughs> what do we do after we finish salsa dancing? We just breathe. We have to get some water, guys. Thank you very much to Little Havana here in Osu. Thank you to Salsa in the City. You guys, it's been another episode of Art and Soul. I'm Melissa Ward. I'll see you next time. Let's go. Hey. <laughs> Art and soul, art, soul, art and soul, art, yeah, soul, art and soul.